Greetings fellow interloper, it's Taylor. Hey, this video goes out to all the busy travelers who need to complete this expedition, but just don't have the time. So I tried to figure out a way to do this as quickly as possible so you guys don't miss out on any of the cool rewards. All right, well, as you probably know, there's a two week window to get this expedition completed. I don't know when you're looking at this, but it's safe to say that the deadline is fast approaching. There's 28 total milestones to hit, so there's precious little time to waste. So let's get into it. As with any new expedition, you'll start a brand new save. Fortunately, you aren't quite as empty handed as a normal or permadeath start. Once your game loads in, you'll notice right away that your environment is not nearly as hostile as what you'd normally find. So fortunately, hazard protection isn't something you need to worry about right away. To get the most from your jetpack, make sure and shuffle your inventory around to get the proximity bonus for having your stuff grouped together. There's also a few things you can move over to technology to free up some space in your main inventory. You'll notice no shortage of rocks and other resources around, so start scanning and mining for ferrite dust as well as pure ferrite and the usual oxygen and carbon. A good number to shoot for is around 400 ferrite dust and 50 pure ferrite. This will at least cover a few things that you'll need to craft sooner than later. Since this is a speed run, we won't need to spend a ton of time on getting carbon and oxygen, but you will need a little bit, so just get by on the basics. There should also be some dihydrogen crystals around, so go ahead and mine at least 40 of those to make a dihydrogen jelly. Fortunately, you have all these blueprints already. Once you have these amounts, craft six metal platings and one of those dihydrogen jellies. You'll use five of these to craft a Romer Geo Bay. This will earn you your very first milestone. Once you get that pop-up, make sure and go into your Expeditions tab to redeem your rewards. The rewards are always kind of tied to whatever you're doing to earn them, so in this case, we got a couple Exocraft Engine and Boost Mods, as well as some Condensed Carbon. Now that you have your Roamer, you can make your way to your ship. Upon reaching it, you'll knock out another Expedition Milestone, and more rewards to claim. To get that bucket off the ground, you'll need to repair a couple items on your ship. For the Pulse Engine, you'll need one Hermetic Seal and one Metal Plating. You can put 30 of your newfound condensed carbon to good use to craft the Hermetic Seal. The Launch Thruster will use the Dihydrogen Jelly you crafted as well as 50 pure ferrite. You don't need a hyperdrive to take off, but it's definitely something you're going to want to repair once you hit the space station. And for that, you'll need one microprocessor and 125 chromatic metal. Once you exit the atmosphere, you'll earn another milestone for liftoff as well as more rewards to claim. Unlike the other new games you start, you actually have a freighter this time, so go ahead and call it in so we can make some easy money. Once aboard, head upstairs to the back room and snag those little things that you can get from the containers and start deleting freighter rooms. As you delete, you'll amass a ton of silver and some tritium. The tritium you can hang on to, but the silver will net you between 800 and 900,000 depending on your level of deletion. Remember, this is a speed run now, so you won't be using your freighter the same way as a normal game. Even though we're in an abandoned system currently, we can still visit the space station and sell our silver and purchase a few supplies. By this point, you should also earn another milestone for traveling half a million U or so. Again, make sure to snag those rewards. Since our hazard protection is low, I like to get a few batteries. They're super cheap, and they'll buy you enough time to do whatever you need to do in harsh environments. You'll also need some chromatic metal to craft antimatter, which we'll use to make a couple warp cells. And while you're here, you might as well grab a few wiring looms, because you know you'll need those to install tech. Three or five of those should suffice for right now. You can always buy more as you bounce around from system to system. And finally, buy at least one microprocessor so you can fix your hyperdrive. You should also have enough leftover chromatic metal to complete this repair. Now that we have our warp cells crafted, head back to your freighter, charge up the hyperdrive, and warp to an adjacent system. Now, to be as efficient as possible, make sure to select a Corvax system. I'll explain why in a second. As you see, you hit another milestone by completing a warp with your freighter. These are some good rewards as they'll give you warp hypercores and their blueprint, but also five salvaged frigate mods that will be very useful. So head to the freighter upgrade panel and you can see that after we unlock the frigate fuel, we have a few more options. The only one you should worry about is the matter beam. This is crucial to transferring items from your exosuit inventory and your freighter. You'll soon find out that these rewards will eat away at all your available space, but we'll handle that shortly. 
Unfortunately, to get the matter beam, you'll be one short, so remember to pay a visit to any frigates you see, and you should be able to well, lighten their load and snag an extra salvage frigate module. With that out of the way, make your way to the space station. Now, here we have a variety of objectives. First, three of your milestones will require you to learn 10 words of each language. Each set of 10 will be a different milestone. The reason I had you select Corvax was they have the best rewards by far to get sooner than later, which is a nice S-Class hyperdrive mod. Obviously, make sure to talk to every NPC to learn as many words as you can. You can keep track of where you're at in the Expeditions tab within the Phase 4 section. Next, you'll want to be sure to grab all the nav data you can and visit the cartographer to exchange maps. With the tin you got from the Aviator milestone for traveling half a million U, you should have a nice supply to grab a few maps. So right now you'll want to focus on the emergency cartographic data chart for locating stranded lifeforms. This will also point out crashed freighters as well as crashed ships, all of which are milestones. You may need to keep cycling through these to get the milestone you need to show up. A quick tip about repairing the crashed ship is that you don't need to repair everything that's red here. You only need to handle the top row that's flashing. For convenience, I do find it helpful to unlock a couple blueprints, so I snag a few secret charts as well. With blueprints for magnetic resonators and microchips, things go a lot smoother. You will eventually need alien cartographic data, but you can get that later once you've replenished your nav data. Since you will be going through a ton of space stations, that nav data will really pile up. The next series of milestones center around biomes. If you check out phase three, you'll see that there are milestones for visiting a scorched planet, a frozen planet, a toxic planet, as well as a radioactive planet. Don't forget to scan fauna when visiting a desert planet, as well as a lush planet. These are simple enough to knock out as you make your way to each rendezvous checkpoint. Speaking of checkpoints, Something I want to mention that happened to me is that once you enter the system that supposedly has the rendezvous checkpoint, the indicator was not present. I had no idea where to go. At first I thought I needed to get closer to the planet, but there were like five. Then I was wondering if HG decided to make it more of a game and make you land on each and do a scan. Well, you'll be happy to know it was none of these. It was, well, it was user error. Make sure when you're in a checkpoint system that you go into your Expeditions tab and click on the milestone coinciding with the checkpoint that you're at. Once you click this, the indicator will pop up showing you where to go. So as you can tell, there is no real order to getting these milestones. And the best way I've found was to just knock these out as I followed along the rendezvous checkpoints. Remember that not only do you get rewards for each milestone, once you complete all of the milestones from within a phase, you'll get another set of rewards you'll have to redeem. As I mentioned earlier, you'll need to make sure you have plenty of room. So another tip is to make sure and visit every space station you come across to upgrade your exosuit inventory. Not only that, I would highly recommend summoning the anomaly in every system and doing the exact same thing. Many travelers don't know that they can upgrade in an anomaly. The next general tip I have is to install an exocraft summoning station in your freighter so you can call your roamer whenever you need to. This for sure comes in handy when you land at your rendezvous checkpoint and have like 1200 U to go to your target destination. So on your travels, make sure to seek out buried technology mods in order to unlock that. And to unlock it, you actually have to unlock the summoning station first and then you have to get to it. So in total, it's 27 salvage data. I would actually get a few more just to do some upgrades around your freighter, like a trade terminal for instance. Very helpful in selling a lot of the stuff that you accumulate through rewards. Next up is one that'll be a challenge to the interlopers who weren't able to get in early at the start of this expedition, and that's to discover 10 systems. Going about this anywhere near the main rendezvous path is going to probably be impossible, so I do have a couple tips that might make things easier. When you're near a planet that has a rendezvous checkpoint, go ahead and throw a base computer down. That way you can mark your spot when you need to return. The next tip is that any traveler you come across, I would highly recommend seeking them out and getting that glyph. Once you have a couple glyphs, you can then go to the portal and enter in a random address and hopefully get to a spot where it's easy for you to get 10 undiscovered systems in a row. After that, just simply warp back to your original base computer and you're right back in the game. All right, and with those out of the way, we get close to the end game. You'll notice that you need to visit the Atlas for one of your milestones within phase four. 
For this, simply talk to Polo on the anomaly and request coordinates to the atlas. Once you hop back in your ship and pull up the galaxy map, you'll see a tiny atlas symbol next to the system you need to travel to. From here, just enter and take back off again. There's nothing you really need to do other than simply discovering it. The milestone should pop up once you're inside. The final phase, phase five, takes an interesting turn. Once you unlock the final rendezvous point, the next milestone will then be revealed. I know this is a walkthrough, but I do want to maintain at least a little bit of mystery for you. All I'll say is that this is the area where you're going to want to have a lot of alien cartographic data maps from the space station cartographer. Once you're able to unlock this milestone, the next few are actually community-based events. At the time of this recording, these events have not been unlocked yet. Right now, we're sitting at about 58% completed. When you do reach that point, you can get an easy progress report just by visiting the Quicksilver vendor at the Anomaly. So hopefully, fingers crossed, for tasks that are somewhat self-explanatory. If they're not, you can be sure I'll be doing another video to clear up any confusion. If you enjoyed this walkthrough, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I wish you safe travels and the best of luck with your beachhead expedition. Thanks so much for watching. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming, signing off.